is KJ and Lions on WEEI. We brought more than just wind and rain to Florida. It actually washed ashore a million dollars worth of cocaine. Yep, <laughs> U.S. Border Patrol says Debbie blew 70 pounds of cocaine onto the beach in the Florida Keys. The 25 packages were found by a good Samaritan who told officials Border Patrol eventually seized the drugs. <laughs> KJ and Lions, WEEI. We've kept you wide awake here for the last three and a half hours. You missed any of the show. The Odyssey app is free. Just type in WEEI. KJ and Lions started at nine this morning. John, uh, the Tropical Storm, it be, later became Tropical Storm Debbie. This thing was so intense. It was like heavy winds in Quebec. That's how far this thing reached. It was just, it, that just thing was uncomfortable. A lot going it, on with Debbie. Yeah, it's, well, yeah. I, yeah, do you really believe that the Good Samaritans? Like, yeah, officers, I, I I found a ton of cocaine. I found a million dollars worth of cocaine. It just it just washed up with the storm. Yeah, yeah. we got a few questions for you, sir. Maybe that's what gave the Tropical Storm Debbie so much extra power. Well, yeah. Well, I guess that's the other part of it is you know. Um, well, yeah, I guess because think about it, Debbie went across Tampa. That was from WFLA in Tampa. It goes across Tampa, then cuts back into the Atlantic Ocean. And then cuts back in around Charleston, South Carolina, and just pours rain going all the way up, all the way coming all the way up through here to Boston. It was huge, bad, bad, like through Quebec. It was pretty bad, I think, like through, like through, not too far from Pittsburgh. Just got really heavy winds. It's like, how do you last that long? Maybe that's where the other million dollars of cocaine went to. Like she just kept it inside of them and just kept going and going and going. Um, the, thank God the women's Olympics team won today, John. Yeah, barely. Barely won because do you know what the conversation in America would be tomorrow morning until the end of time if Team USA lost that game against France today? Yes, it would be all about our good friend, Caitlin Clark. Okay, if you had Caitlin Clark, you would have won. And you know who would have been happy that that happened? Steve Kerr. Because Steve Kerr, the way he handled the management of the team in terms of minutes, like even in that French game, I'm like when they went to Wem- uh, when they went to Wemby and Gobert, I was like, so why is Joel and B not in there? Like, like at one point, like okay, Jason Tatum, yeah, okay, he's in there now, but why is he guarding Rudy Gobert in the paint? Like, get like, what are you doing with these rotations? I this might be the last of Steve Kerr with Team USA basketball because Team USA basketball literally won those games on their own. Those last two games yesterday against France and a couple days before that against Serbia. Because of the talent on the team, not because of the coaching. It felt like in that Serbia game, especially, Kerr got bailed out. Like, Steph and Durant and LeBron were so good in that Serbia game and the comeback. Yeah. It overshadowed him not playing Tatum and some of the, you know, rotation questions. And then, yeah, the Embiid thing, too. Like, I, I wouldn't be shocked, KJ, if 2028, it's it's Spolstra or someone else is the head. And I wouldn't be shocked if Kerr doesn't want to deal with it anymore, right? Like, yeah, he's on a gold medal team. He's the head coach of it kind of move on from there. I, I, I wonder if we get one of those uh, mutual parting of the ways, as it's always deemed. Uh, Noah Lyles won the bronze medal and tested positive for COVID. Uh, you just can imagine what those do for the medical stories. They're like, okay, so you, so you mean to tell me that a guy can win an Olympic race, we come in third in an Olympic race against world-class sprinters and have COVID? <laughs> is, is COVID a PED? Well, yeah, well, that's the other part. Like, you know, like if you took too much antihistamine, but th- that's the other thing. Noah Lyles is also the guy who questioned world champion of what when it talked about basketball. And so, like, look, I, Grady's an American. Am I a fan? I don't have to be. But not a real f- big fan of Noah Lyles because, like, okay. He won the 100 t- meter, though. Yeah, Yes, he won the 100 meter, but when he but when he loses the 200 meter to two other people, he's got COVID? Like, w- like is that an excuse? I you buy it. I, mean? I buy right. it. Right, like, so if that's the case, I would presume you won the 100 with COVID, too. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I tested positive for COVID. That's why I came in third. Like, come on, bro. That's weak. That's weak sauce. Uh, did you see the sprinter? Uh, I think she was from France. I can't remember where she was from. But after she wins the race, she proposes to her boyfriend in the stands. Did you I see I heard this? that, so I didn't see it. I heard <sighs> the story. He's cooked for life. Cooked for life. He Like, what, what decisions does he get to make? Like, do you think he could go in the joint account and go buy an Xbox if he wanted to? Well, hopefully. Hopefully, right? But then again, yeah. she runs that video right in the kitchen on, you know, these you got these smart screens now on on, uh, on your refrigerators. 
Like on the smart screen of the refrigerator, she's got a nice photo of her proposing to him and saying, yes, reminding him, you better ask me, son, if you want to smile. 